Welcome back to Grassroots Radio Colorado. This is Chris Cook, and I've got Corey and Andy Page of the Party of Choice in studio. Real quick, and and I this kind of totally slipped my mind. We've got we've got a new time slot. We've got new listeners. We've had you guys on every Thursday for the last six months or so. But talk to me, Corey, about what the Party of Choice is and what we're trying to do here. Right. Um, and actually, I completely forgot it was a new time slot too. <laughs> so if you are a conservative, then you are already in the Party of Choice. Because conservatives want to give people more choices, more freedoms, more liberties. Right. Liberals want to take choices away from people and control them. Now, the reason that we use choice is for two things. First of all, people do not understand freedom and liberty. Liberty it's just too abstract. Yeah, liberty is powdered wigs and knickers, and freedom is kind of fuzzy. What's wrong with powdered wigs and knickers? Well, I think they're fun, but a lot of people think they're weird. <laughs> so that's why you can't. Yeah, folks, if you that. have a fetish that way, you know, I don't want. I'm not here to judge. Okay, whatever you're into, powdered wigs, knickers, you go. We, we don't judge you here at the party of choice. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, and then the second reason is this: um, too often we see the word choice has been taken over by the left. Good point. They have hijacked that term. It is a conservative term. It is not a liberal one. And it's time that we take our word back. Right. And so it's been funny because as we've been working with the party of choice and spreading the message, at first people freak out a little bit because they're like, choice? What do you mean choice? Are you are you trying to promote abortion or something? It's like, no, 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 no. We're pro-life, but we're taking our word back. And that's exactly why we're taking it back because it, is, it has been pigeonholed. Right. So... In order to apply this, what we're doing is we're asking people to take a step back from memorizing talking points, which are great, but taking a step back and looking at issues using a choice versus control perspective. Okay. Because when you do that, it makes us the good guys and it makes the left the bad guys. Right. Because they're trying to limit Mm -hmm. what we can do. And they, as I was talking about at the top of the show tonight, they're substituting their judgment for ours. Exactly. And we, that's tyranny. It absolutely is. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. So this is not manipulating the conversation. This is not help, help me out here. I mean, we're not we're not doing absolutely not. Like it's that. the opposite. See, in in every uh, in every situation in life, when you use language, when you speak, you use it for one of two reasons, either to reveal your thoughts or to conceal your thoughts. Always. You're either using language to cover up what you really think. Or you're using language to convey what you really think. It can even be something as simple as, yeah, I'd like fries with that. Okay. (laughs) Um, But the, uh, and so notice that all of these techniques we're talking about are all revealing techniques. Manipulation is when you use language to conceal and manipulate and and deceive. Okay. That's the difference. So this isn't manipulation at all. This but, is getting down to the real root of the conversation. Absolutely. You're bringing out, you're bringing their control up to the surface. Okay. Or in the case of if you're talking to somebody who's simply searching, you're showing them how the, you're bringing the left's control up to the surface for them to see. Not manipulation. It's the opposite. Okay. I like that. Mm-hmm. All right. So we were talking about sort of low hanging fruit that we can, we can that we can Use just this. pick off of the branches. Right. They're easy, and a lot of people are going to roll their eyes because they already do when you talk about these issues. For instance, why do the Democrats control what kind of light bulbs we buy? That is a really good question. You know, <laughs> they're so much more expensive. They've got toxic chemicals like mercury in them, so you can't tell me it's to save the planet. I mean, not really. It, well, but you have, I mean, as long as you dispose of them properly with hazmat suits, and I'm sure that there's there's special places for these things, right? You know, I actually see, um, I, I envision scenes like from Saving Private Ryan, when you're storming the beach, you know, and you got these tanks coming towards you, and you can throw these new light bulbs at the tanks. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get a direct hit... <clears throat> now you have to have a good arm. I'm not saying this is have easy. To have a but good arm. Yes. Yeah. Well. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's and it's funny. It's funny that you say that. I was just thinking about that last night. I live in an old house and I blow out light bulbs on a very, very regular basis. And I mean, for my lamps, you know, everything. Uh-huh. I go through light bulbs like there's no tomorrow. It's so annoying mm-hmm. to have to deal with this. It's like the incandescents worked great, and now. See, I get it now. I thought you meant like you have some superpower, like you actually blew out a light bulb. No. Like, 
Like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, that's incredible. Wow, I did not know this about you. No, they just, uh, they're always blown. Well, so anyway. Here's another one, too. And this one's, I, the kids in high schools have started this one without even us influencing it. Um, Michelle Obama, why do you have to control what other people's kids eat? Exactly. I mean, goodness gracious, these poor kids are being fed these horrible, disgusting looking meals. They started a Twitter campaign for crying out loud. It, they did. There's a hashtag. I can't remember what it is, but there is a hashtag out there because the kids are standing. Yes. Thanks, Michelle Obama. Hashtag thanks, Michelle Obama. Yes. I love it. Yes. And love so these it. kids, they are learning about grassroots politics in their lunchrooms. Love it. Love See, it. I would like to do one of those like Nutrisystem type commercials. I've lost 70 pounds. Thanks to Michelle Obama. I haven't eaten in months. <laughs> This is incredible. I don't eat anymore. I don't want to. Well, I didn't know. Uh, I used to. I was. A, I was an eating addict, but now not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, she cured me. Don't don't have to eat anymore. Exactly. Completely done. And and this is. I mean, some of these. And and, and obviously, we are talking about low, low hanging fruit. These are the places where they the the left has overreached big time, way beyond anywhere where they should. You know, from a strategic or political standpoint, have been mm-hmm. right. The sodas, yeah. The there's trans another one. fats, yeah. Why can't I buy whatever size soda I want in New York City? Right. And those are things that, if you are new to this whole thought process and line of reasoning, those are really easy ones to bring up in conversation as you start getting used to thinking and talking this way, and then you can move into more complicated issues. Okay, give us a more complicated one. Well, well, first I got to give you my fave. Oh, what's your fave? Political correctness. <laughs> Why do you want to control how other people talk? Yes. My gosh, you actually want to control how they speak. Oh, my goodness. It's worse than that. Political. What? It's worse than that. It is. They want to control how you think. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I mean, political correctness in America and American political correctness is the only power on earth that can actually get uh, born again evangelical Christians to want to watch South Park just just to get away from it. I mean, uh, they need freedom. They need they need that that outlet. Look, yes. folks, let, on all of these, keep in mind the left is suffocating to be around. This is why I left the left. This is why I ran screaming from their doors from the church of the left. I ran screaming from it. They they're suffocating their nanny state. Oh gosh, and I'm and kidding. how can we not take advantage of this? We we ought to be able to capitalize on this if we're smart. Mm-hmm. If we're smart, if we learn how to not lead with our facts. Lead with our lead with the empathy, mm-hmm. right? Yes, and and point this stuff out, especially to unaffiliated. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you said, the the liberal advocates that you find on on Facebook are one thing. Yeah, but people that you run into at the grocery store or mm-hmm. eating lunch, you start chatting with somebody in line or something like that. Having these conversations, and being able to open up this door and say, you know, you might want to look at this just a slightly different way. Yeah, well, you know, would you want to? That's a great way to open it up. Right. And um, sorry, I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> she was looking at me, my beauty. Yes. <laughs> yes I, well, hey, I understand. It's okay. That's why we don't have a mirror on the opposite side, because I don't want to throw myself off. Now I remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> my point was that as you start using these oh, these uh, conversation starters, people start to think and they're going to start to say something. They're going to start to say, oh, I never thought of it that way before. Right. Which is our whole goal. We want people to think about this in a way that is different than what they have been conditioned to think. So when you hear that, when you hear that phrase, I never, I never looked at it that way, which I actually got from a liberal friend of mine the other day. Mm-hmm. I, I had pointed something out to him. I had pointed out, we were talking about gun control, and I pointed out to him that you do not trust people. And and that, he said, I really hate it when you use words like that. <laughs> he said, but that is a completely accurate phrase, and I do not have a comeback for that. Well, I, I never thought of it that way. What's my comeback? Well, I mean, you're, you had a great one. You don't trust people. Why do you want to control how well someone can defend themselves? Right. Are you going to control? How, why do you want to? Look, the, 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 are the criminals going to count bullets? Because no. you're making the you're making the victims count bullets, and the criminals won't. Right. Why do you want to do this to them? Right. Notice again, once again, if we do not bring out the control in the left's position, which we're going to do with vetoes on the national scene, and we can do 
with these techniques um, personally. If you don't bring the control out, then everybody will look at the left and all they're going to see are compassion and free stuff. And you'll be sitting there wondering, why didn't all my talking points work? It's a disguise. Right. They that's, are, the thing that, that's the thing to remember is it's just a disguise. Yes. They're protecting their ribs. Right. They're trying. They're The number one thing, remember, reveal or conceal. That's how you use language. They will use it to conceal their desire for control. You must reveal their desire for control. Right. And our the, the basis for our policy is giving people the freedom to choose for themselves. You bet. That's the bottom line, right? Absolutely. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> so where can people find you guys? How can they get in touch with you, catch up on all these techniques? Get Okay, the best way to do it is through our, our website, which is thepartyofchoice.com. Okay. And then be sure to go out and check out our Facebook page. We update that the most. We're also on YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. Awesome. Awesome. You guys got any trainings coming up or anything? Any We're chance? working on locations. Okay. So they're coming. We just... We have to find a place to have them. <laughs> we are speaking. Uh, we are uh, speaking in Parker on the 18th. Okay, Franktown. Franktown. Sorry, close to Parker, sort of. Kind of far yep. away from there. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to see where, just go to our website. Yep, thepartyofchoice.com, and then go to our events page. Awesome, Corey and Andy Pate, the Party of Choice. Thank you so much for joining me, as you do on on Thursdays. I really appreciate this. I always learn something. I always learn how to actually say something a little bit better than the way that I would have said it the day before. And after six months of repetition, I'm actually remembering it the day after now. So this is this is good. Yay. A little slow on the uptake. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Folks, you're going to want to tune in to KLZ tomorrow. It's Friday. So it's Hot Topic Friday on uh on uh, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, whatever the guy's name is. He's also got Robert Spencer, Tom Cranawitter, and Steve House on tomorrow morning. Steve House is announcing that he is running for chair of the Colorado GOP. You're going to want to join in at that, um, join in on that conversation. He's going to be on at 7. He's a great guy, too. Yes, he is, and he's a visionary. Love to see him there. Love to see him there. Love to